What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shah, and welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee. Think about hitting the subscribe button right now and turn on your notifications if you want to see when our new videos go live. Dr. Maxfield is trying to outgrow my beard today. <laughs> just uh, get bored with life. I just needed to change. So today, we're going to play a little bit of a game. It's called Overrated or Underrated. So we're going to yell out some ingredients, and then we're going to decide whether or not we think they're overrated or underrated. Over, under, ingredients edition. Here we go. Here we go. The first ingredient we're gonna talk about is hyaluronic acid or HA. What's your impression of this? Overrated. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree, overrated. Overrated. So you guys can go back and watch our Vichy Mineral 89 video. We love the product. As a matter of fact, every time before we shoot videos, I put on hyaluronic acid. That's actually a must for me because it gives you that really healthy looking glow, especially if you're shooting video. But is it a necessary part of a skincare routine? Absolutely not. Yeah. So not only is it not a necessary part of a skincare routine, it's in everything. So there's <laughs> there's a hyaluronic acid serums, there's hyaluronic acid in actives a lot of times, there's hyaluronic acid sometimes in your retinoid, sometimes there's hyaluronic acid in your moisturizer. So it's literally everywhere. It's found its way into every single product and every single skincare brand will highlight it like hyaluronic acid. And we don't know whether it's low weight, high weight, we don't know anything about their hyaluronic acid. So what I think is that it's been promised to be like the cure all for all things. It does what it does well. So moisturize, plump, hydrate, act as a really good humectant, but it doesn't do much beyond that. Yeah, I totally agree. It fits its role, serves its purpose, may not need a dedicated like product for this ingredient, but it's something you can have in your ingredient list just somewhere. Right, so it's an extra step that's not necessarily required for a really great skincare routine, but also I just don't like people sort of over promise what it can do that it's gonna boost your collagen or have long-term anti-aging benefits. It's gonna do what it does on the skin while it's on the skin, but as soon as that's away, it's not gonna have any long-term benefits like your retinoids, which we love so much, which do have long-term benefits. Your topical hyaluronic acids are really just more moisturizing. Yeah, this seems to be a theme with us. Like if we're really picky about things that over promise, just, I guess it's just because it's really common out there. You know, there's not a lot of responsibility in marketing right now. Uh, you can just kind of make a claim and you really don't have to substantiate it in any which way. And so we kind of, I guess we kind of both get flustered. Is that the word I wanted to say? <laughs> we both get riled up. We both get upset. I don't know. It's a, we just both like really get lost all his words. That. Today we're shooting in the it's, evening. We usually shoot in the morning. So he's losing his I'm mind. I'm a morning person. I, <laughs> I'm a night person. So it's true that any company can make any claim, right? You can go to any store. You can go to Sephora, Ulta and it can make outrageous anti-aging claims. Who can't make false claims are pharmaceutical companies. So prescription medications cannot make claims that are not substantiated and approved by the FDA. So the thing that a lot of people are often worried about are pharmaceuticals and how dangerous those could potentially be. But those are actually extremely highly regulated to the point where they cannot make any off-brand claim. Yeah, they almost shoot themselves in the foot. And actually, that actually is really concerning to me because some of these companies go the extra mile to prove that their product works to an extraordinary, extraordinary length. But then once they do that, they pigeonhole themselves and they can't talk about anything else. They haven't gone that extra 10,000 steps to do. So, you know, if we want companies to do research, we really have to take the time to, you know, put our dollars and buy the products or the research is behind. So just be aware that there's much difference between a prescription medication and what you can find over the counter. Hyaluronic acid, overrated. Agreed. All right, next ingredient, niacinamide. Niacinamide. I'm actually really glad we're talking about this again uh, because, you know, we actually did a video up for this a long time ago, like three cameras ago on the couch, totally different setting. But over the last few weeks, months, last couple months, I've rededicated efforts to look into all the natural ingredients. I can't find anything wrong with niacinamide. I just, I just can't do it. It's just well-rounded. Yeah. So it is sort of the fit all ingredients. So it does so many different things. So if you can go back and watch our niacinamide video, we kind of said that it does meet the hype. So people are always talking about niacinamide and what it can do. It just has all the studies to substantiate the claims that are made about it. So uh, what would you say? Overhyped or underrated, overrated? I'd actually say underrated. I know people already like it. They are, some people already love it, but I still think it's underrated. I think people should be going out of their way to use this ingredient more. I would say appropriately rated because it's just so hyped up, right? Like, especially 2020, there was like 
a hundred skincare brands that uh, came out with niacinamide products. So I think it it was underrated, probably like. It's probably now getting, it's probably, it's getting the hype it deserves. I'm with you, you know? <laughs> That's fair. You know, getting the hype it deserves. We're going to disagree on a few of these. Yeah, I we are. Like. But here's the reason why I say that, though. You know, if you're looking for a topical vitamin, there are actually very few that aren't irritating, which is kind of bizarre to think about. But niacinamide is one of the very few antioxidants with topical soothing properties. I mean, not soothing, but it works in sensitive skin. It's been studied in atopic dermatitis, which is the poster child for sensitive skin. And then it also has a myriad of benefits, including unique ones such as decreasing oil production. It just, I have a hard time imagining an ingredient that does more. Yeah, it does a little bit of everything and it's a great supporting ingredient in almost any skincare regimen. So you can add it to your acne routine. You can add it to your sensitive skincare routine. You can add it to a redness routine, someone who's got rosacea. You can add it to pretty much anything and it's gonna have a lot of benefits. It even moisturizes the skin to some degree, right? So niacinamide, I agree, totally excellent ingredient. Um, I personally use niacinamide in my skincare routine, but there's been a myriad of niacinamide products that yeah. come out. And like we said in our other video, you don't necessarily need a dedicated niacinamide product just because your moisturizer may have niacinamide. So that's kind of where I'm at, where I'm like, okay, it's, it got hyped because it deserved hype. And then it's like, all right, we're good. We got it. That's fair. fair. Okay. I also didn't know there was this third category of like, it's exactly where it should be. Well, oh uh, yeah, we're making up <laughs> the rules as we go along here. All right, so overrated, underrated. So I'm sticking with it. I'll say underrated stamp. Appropriately rated stamp. All right, my fourth option stamp is coming in soon. <laughs> it is what it is. I make up the rules as I go. So this next one is honey. Honey. Honey, in my opinion, underrated. So everybody knows I'm against putting food on the skin. Been against it, will always be against it, and there are a few exceptions to this. And the reason why I think honey is underrated, and I know you're probably gonna disagree with me on this, is that of all the things that I've seen in homemade masks have pretty much no evidence at all. There are very few exceptions to this where green tea, turmeric and honey tend to actually have some evidence behind them and would make sense in a mask. Now, are there studies to potentially support that in an anti-aging regimen? Probably not, but at the end of the day, um, it's a pretty safe ingredient. It has known anti-inflammatory properties. It has uh, antibacterial properties. It has moisturizing properties. So if you're gonna do a homemade mask and you're putting together some ingredients from your kitchen, one that I would support is honey, and there is a tremendous amount of research in Manuka honey for wounds. So I think it's underrated. So, okay, you may have bumped me from, I was gonna say, I, I would lean towards overrated because it, again, just like the last ingredient, I think this is something where it over promises sometimes. I think there's a ton of data about how this works in the lab, how it works for wound healing. Um, but outside of that, then you start getting into just conjecture and it's not been shown to be helpful for something like acne as compared to topical soap, which we know is not a treatment for acne. So I'll say appropriately rated almost begrudgingly <laughs> because he's right. I, I think it's, it has a tremendous potential upside. We need more data on honey. Someone please help us put this together. Definitely very little, very little downside, very safe ingredient. So, okay, I'll say stamp appropriately rated. Okay, underrated, I approve of honey. I'm gonna plant my- What, approve? This is like another thing. I'm uh, approving it now. You know, not that's only, a new thing. I underrated and approved. Underrated and approved. Tasty. <laughs> also, also edible. Edible. All right, next up, big, big ingredient. And we're a little cautious to take this one down, but vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C. So we have heavy hitters today. This is just blowing my mind. So vitamin C has some very possible upside. Um, I'll go with, well, I have to go with overrated. No, appropriately rated. Overrated. I'm gonna plant my flag. So big fan of vitamin C again. No, appropriately rated. Yeah, this is, a hard, this is a hard game, y'all. You know what it is? Because it's so hyped. It's so hyped. It's like niacinamide to me. It's like it got so much hype and there's like, you can find vitamin C in anything, yeah. right? But it really does have a lot of studies to support it. Um, not only orally, but also topically and wound healing from anti-aging to anti-pigment to every, you know, so many studies on, on, on vitamin C. It has some of those niche properties that are kind of hard to come by. It helps with dispigmentation, collagen growth, helps brighten the skin. And then you get to like some of the scientific nuance, like is it stable? Does it get absorbed by the skin? And I think that's where some of our hesitation lies is we kind of know that I don't, we, we're kind of uncertain as to how well this actually penetrates and acts uh, in real life. I agree. I completely agree with that. So that's, that's the, 
the whole downside of vitamin C. It comes to formulation. It has a lot of difficulty penetrating the skin, especially at the pH that it's stable at. And then the fact that it's not uh, lipid soluble, meaning that it doesn't get through our skin barrier pretty easily. It just makes it so difficult to think that it's gonna go through the skin, get into the dermis and be that essential cofactor that we need to build collagen. Uh, we do know that it has antioxidant benefits uh, to, to basically fight away free radicals that come from the sun. So vitamin C is one of those things where if it worked the way it does in theory, right, it would be extremely underrated. But the fact that it's so difficult to put in a skincare formula and the fact that it gets so much hype by everyone where it's essentially the thing that everyone touts is like, you have to have it in your skincare routine. Yeah. So that's why I say appropriately rated. And I would say that, what do you think? Do you think it's a necessary part of a skincare routine? Hmm. It depends on your treating. But so if you're honestly, if you're treating dispigmentation, I would say after retinoids, niacinamide, it's right up there as like a tier two ingredient and as lake acid. So it's like a solid tier two ingredient for dispigmentation. So what I do like vitamin C for is that, particularly I like to use it in the morning. Um, and this is up for debate, depending on who you talk to. Some people say use it at night because of the collagen building benefits and the fact that it's not necessarily that stable in the sun. Some people say use it during the day, me, uh, because of its antioxidant benefits. And also because it doesn't layer well with a lot of ingredients that we use at night, like acids and retinol. So I just prefer to use it during the day. Um, and I like it in, in routines for anti-aging and hyperpigmentation. I do. You do. He does. I still think and it's all of that's still fair. I still think it's only appropriately rated though. <laughs> I think that's also true. Okay. <laughs> So I think we're in agreement on this yeah, one. Yeah, we are. Vitamin C, appropriately rated. Appropriately rated. Okay, next up we have azelaic acid. Underrated. Underrated in my opinion. So I put out a video. So those of you who don't know, I am very active on TikTok and got active about over almost, almost a year ago now on TikTok. And one of the first videos that I posted that like exploded was basically saying that azelaic acid was underrated. Since then, it's definitely gotten more hype since then. Uh, but I still think that people aren't talking about it enough. Yeah, that's fair. It's it's funny, actually, at this point, you know, I'll have patients come in and say something and we're like, oh, yeah, no, Dr. Shaw, you brought that to light. Now it's like sold out at the stupid store. <laughs> Um, but I agree. I, I think as lake acid still kind of harbors the underrated category. Um, it just is so great and has such a well-defined mechanism for treating dispigmentation. Um, I just think it's very effective at what it does. It can be bought at a pretty affordable price now. Um, the Ordinary has a great 10% azelaic acid, and I think the price point for that is perfect. Yeah, so that's extremely affordable. Um, Paul's Choice has one. The only caveat with that one is that it's formulated with salicylic acid, so even though most azelaic acid formulations are safe in pregnancy, I would not use that formulation of azelaic acid in pregnancy. Naturium has one as well, um, and I think that there are other ones that are on the horizon. So we'll put some links uh, below for azelaic acid, but I completely agree. It's underrated because it treats acne, and it treats hyperpigmentation, which is so nice because if you have acne and you're forming dark spots afterwards, I mean, it's gonna treat both of them while they're happening. It inhibits tyrosinase, which is an enzyme that produces pigment in the skin. So the mechanism makes a lot of sense to me and it mildly exfoliates the skin as well. So it just has so many benefits, especially somebody who's acne, hyperpigmentation, dull skin texture, and because it's safe in pregnancy, it's just one of those ingredients I feel like we should be talking more about. Definitely a good tier two ingredient as well. Can put this into your regimen pretty safely and easily. I have this solidly, I guess, as an underrated. Underrated, agreed. All right, here's a good one. I've been thinking about this one a lot. Ceramides, what do you think about ceramides? Okay, actually, I've been thinking about this a lot too. Uh, I've been on an eczema kick for a while and, and people with atopic dermatitis or eczema, they don't make as much ceramide. Um, so ceramide is like a, a functional, foundational, necessary lipid that your skin makes, and it helps protect it from water loss and a lot of other things. Ceramide as an ingredient, I think it's actually still underrated, but that's a hard, it's a hard underrated because it's gotten really popular with CeraVe. Yeah, so I, well, that's a good point. So there are a lot of moisturizers that have ceramides in them, mm -hmm. but because CeraVe has basically said they put three essential ceramides in all of their products, 
And because of that, it sort of brought light to ceramides, which yeah. were found in a lot of moisturizers that were approved by the, the eczema society. So I look at the skin like a brick wall, essentially. And the bricks are like these cornea sites, which are just skin cells that don't have nuclei at the top of the skin. And ceramides are actually in between them. So they're basically like the mortar. So they're keeping things out, they're keeping things in, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of things and they're essential, right? They're essential ceramides. So actually Cerave has it right, they're essential ceramides, we, we need them. And um, they're actually in a very particular ratio in the skin compared to other lipids. Um, so we actually have to have a particular ratio and ceramides are actually the most abundant lipid in that top layer of the skin. So essential, I think it's an excellent part to have in a moisturizer. So I encourage you all to look for moisturizers with ceramides in them, especially if you have an impaired skin barrier or underlying condition like atopic dermatitis. We'll list some products below that have ceramides in them. CeraVe, obviously, you know, I'm kind of like a, we'll talk about this maybe at another time, but I'm kind of like a sentimental person. So so if I have like an emotional connection to a particular brand or product, you know, I just like, so the story with Cer CeraVe is essentially that I, it was the first moisturizer I ever used. And so for that reason, I was like, you know, I'm attached to it in that way. So that's why I'm like a big fan of CeraVe. <laughs> Does it make some sense? For me, CeraVe is like uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Um, I heard so much about it and I've heard so much about it, I'm kind of sick of it. But I can't get away from it because it's actually a great product. <laughs> like it's a great product line, they have great ingredients and we've been recommending it in dermatology for decades. So it's hard to get mad at the hype of CeraVe because you're is. like, well, we've been recommending it forever and now it's hyped and you're like, uh. But the only thing I'm mad about is actually that it's selling out now everywhere because it's been so hyped up and you know, I feel sort of guilty about it and um, you know I know that some people have tagged me in videos with kids that have eczema and not being able to find products so now I actually kind of try not to hype up things like the CeraVe healing ointment because I don't want it to sell out for people that don't necessarily need it even though it's a great product. That's true. So, um, you know it's like one of those things where we kind of have responsibilities to, yeah. I don't know. Um, but, but for that reason you know we'll link those below because there are a lot of other great moisturizers with ceramides in them for you. So ceramides? Ceramides, uh, underrated. Underrated, I agree. So that wraps up our underrated, overrated part one. This time we were talking about ingredients. Next time we're gonna be talking about things like skincare devices, skincare routines. I don't know, any. we could do this to anything, right? Let us know if you guys like this game, <laughs> if you enjoy this format, or what you want us to put in our next underrated or overrated video. Okay, so these list of ingredients are a lot of our personal personal takes, our personal preferences. Um, we'll talk about some of the science behind it, but really this is just gonna be our favorites and uh, least favorites. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, you all. Appreciate it. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Think about turning on the notifications. That would be super helpful for us. And uh, we'll be back with more uh, underrated or overrated. Like we said, these are just our opinions. Um, you know, don't, don't come at us. Don't at me, bro. I'm just giving you my opinion on what is currently trending in skincare and what our thoughts are. That is the first time I've ever said like, comment, and subscribe on any of our videos. <laughs> so he means business. It means, I mean, if Luke is going to ask, Dr. Maxfield, he never asks. Never have asked. I'm pretty sure we this can check is, this. This is a monumental moment. So think think about it. Subscribing, not for me, but for, but for me. him, for his gentle soul. As many of you have said, he has a gentle soul. <laughs> you all have said so you've that. said that. <laughs> and quite frankly, I'm offended that no one thinks I have a gentle soul. <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys next time. All right.